Ah, Veligion, and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi, and today we're gonna show off the mid game Byzantine guide. That is correct, you guys left a like on the initial guide where we showed how to crush the Ottomans. And because the like target was reached, we will show the rest of this, namely the next 30 years, what you should be doing, expanding where, how to deal with your diplomatics, and how to go from the balkanized version of the Byzantines into the Eastern Roman Empire version of the Byzantines within the first few years. So before we start it off, don't forget to leave a like. If we get 3000 likes on this video, I'm also going to do a Venice starting moves guide. Before we continue with this video, I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, NordVPN, which is a VPN, which is a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. If you guys ever had issues with games not being available in your country, or you simply don't want to let others know your location, then NordVPN can help you out with that. You can change your virtual location, use that to get discounts or prices that vary from those in your country, and guess what? There's 5,200 plus servers and 59 countries to choose from. I'm using NordVPN to avoid DDoS attacks and block any potential dangerous websites, and I'm glad glad that they reached out to me for this sponsorship as I actually believe in this product and wouldn't cover it otherwise. If you use the link on the screen, which you can also find in the description and the comment section pinned, you get a two years plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. This is a special offer so take advantage of it. And if you haven't seen my first guide for the Byzantines where I showed how to crush the Ottomans, then check the link in the description as well as I will pin this in the comment section. We have three vassals right now. We have Bulgaria, which we already started integrating, and it's going to take a while to integrate them. Also, Bosnia, because we're going to get their cores back from Herzegovina eventually. And the initial vassal of Epirus, because of their amazing fleet. We're not going to sit around and wait for stuff to happen, are we? We are going to be attacking Albania. Why are we attacking Albania? Because we can call in the knights, cobaligerate the knights, and crush the knights in one fell swoop. Whilst at the same time, we can also do some damage to the Venetians. It's actually really important that we do some damage to the Venetians because we want to get all of these islands back if we can in this war, but likely it's going to take a few wars before we can actually take them back. We're currently in a war with our allies Muscovy against Kazan. This is their war and we're going to stay in this until they finish it, but afterwards we're going to get enough favors to use Muscovy against our enemies. Of course, we got yearly corruption, good old Roman way of corruption is coming back. It's back in fashion, everybody. Back in fashion. Gotta be extra careful with the Venetians. They actually have a pretty big army here, and their fleet's pretty strong as well, so we're gonna try and uh, get hegemony fleet-wise over the Aegean Sea. This fight will decide the future of uh, generations of Romans to come, as well as Venetians, and luckily for us, we actually kicked their butts here. They are trying to reinforce. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you right there. Nah, I cannot go there. There. Hold up a second. I think I have one of these armies I can go with. There you go. I can definitely go with these boys and take out whatever is left of these guys that were trying to reinforce their armies. An extra victory for the might of the Roman Empire. Thou shall not messeth with the Romaneth Empire. We also lost the naval battle here, so uh, we've basically had to uh, send our ships over to stand by for the time being. Sadly, sag, sag, sad. But we did win all the battles and we are getting the ticking war score now from the provinces in Albania. So we'll just have to wait it out until we can peace out the Venetians first, followed by the rest of the guys right after. Since we need to peace out Venice so that we can crush the knights uh, fleets so we can get into the knights lands and annex them. Want to do this, otherwise they're going to raid my coastlines a lot and it's going to hurt my economy massively. It is really important whenever you're playing as the Byzantines, you crush the knights very early on after you wars with the Ottomans so that they don't destroy your coastline and lower your prosperity like crazy. Sadly, we won't be seeing any Venetian lands in this war because it would take way too long for this war to finish if I was to just push on for these three islands here. And I need to piece out the Venetians so that I can actually get their fleets out of the war. They crushed my navies twice and I need to get naval superiority so I can get to the Knights Island. That means I just pieced them out for the minimum amount of uh, whatever I could get. We're gonna need some cogs since we don't have any 
cogs right now and I'm gonna build a few here enough to just transport my ships over to the Knights land I've also taken uh, loans for 1% interest which means almost nothing here since I am gonna use these loans to also adopt the Renaissance right after it spawns completely in Constantinople which means I can get my technologies way faster than I would otherwise whilst we're waiting for our ships to finish building we're gonna attack Herzegovina since Hungary is not joining in the war because they're attacked by the Poles that means I can also cobelligerate the Romanians and uh, as such I'll get a brand new vassal here in Wallachia as well as feed all of Herzegovina to Bosnia because it is end of the day rightful Bosnian clay we all know we all know brave Romanians are brave can we get an F in the chat for the stack wipe here it pains my heart to see fellow Romanians getting wiped out like that and the invasion of the Knights Island has begun will the brave Roman troops succeed in destroying these foul creatures that call themselves Knights you what bro would you call me bro would you call me technically guys the Knights were also mainly English and Frenchmen not just Frenchmen tons of Englishmen so uh, that's uh, semi accurate what I just did right over there almost about to finish off the sieges in Valachia as well which means we got our next vessel a loading up here we finished off Bosnia too so it's all about these guys now looks like we might actually lose this which means that we got rebels no that's not what it means it means that I'm gonna be uh, pulling back these troops in that case all right round two a loading up boys a loading up let's bring these guys back home in that case and take the other troops which are fresh and ready and now we can attack once more oh wait I got the wrong troops <laughs> bruh bruh you guys attach the transport and let's go these are the good troops now we can attack once more as I said and we got the same general so it should be fine we also managed to finish these guys off here and that means uh, we're gonna be vassalizing them Daryagu our brand new vessel here the Schutzman of Romania we're not gonna be making these guys either uh, transfer trade since we need to um, keep them loyal until we fully annex them and for the Bosnians we're gonna give them back all of their cores in Herzegovina and take the cash for ourselves this means we also have uh, a few over our diplo relations we're gonna drop the alliance with uh, Theodoro here Saj but Theodoro has to go we got more important things to uh, take care of right now Bolu rebels ooh you can we actually get there yes we can get there finally Rhodes has fallen and we now can fully annex them and I also have a special surprise for you guys are you guys ready for this I don't think you're ready for this but I'm gonna show you anyway look at this Ottomans are at war with the Castilians because of the Castilian conquest of Granada bruh Granada watched my guide and they allied Ottomans this is legit what just happened right here but aside from that, we also are so close to adopting the institution. We're going to save up our points here. We're not going to take up just yet. So it's going to be ridiculously cheap once we do decide to take up. Obviously, we're going to be fully annexing Albania as well here. And with the end of the Albanians or uh, Albanians. Yeah, okay. Albanians, guys, with the end of the Albanians, we got nobody else in the Balkans to challenge us. Now we just need to take over the islands and the Ottomans once our truce is over with them so until that time we're gonna skip forward a little bit and consolidate as well as reinforce our empire here bring our troops back home of course and delete the fort in Rhodes, which is absolutely useless finally we got the institution in constantinople which means we can adopt this for a lot cheaper than we would otherwise and there you go we can almost get the next tech of admin already and very close to getting the diplo tech now because we actually have a lot of extra military points lying around despite the fact that i would personally prefer to actually go for religious first for the bonuses that it gives me and the free cb against everybody next to me i will however go for quantity ideas so that i get a strong enough army to fight my wars in the early parts of the game we also managed to get faceting in constantinople so that is absolutely amazing gems here is gonna boost our economy so much it's insane 20 years production efficiency boost plus 20% is great also then we finish coring that province up with more to come we're also building an extra 10 galleys over our forts limit as our truce with Venice is finishing in one year and once that happens we're gonna attack them Austria is not joining so far hopefully that's gonna stay like this if it does stay it's me against uh, Venice and Genoa so it should be fair 
fairly easy, but I do need the extra ships for that war, however, so that's why I'm going over my force limit here. And the great words of General Hammond, SG-1, you gotta go for taking over Dorato. Uh, that's probably not what he said, but I'm a massive Stargate fan. If you were to, let me know in the comment section. I want to believe I'm not the only nerd on here. So Dorato is our main war target. We're gonna get this, so we get the uh, ticking war score from it. We're not gonna be able to get too many uh, forts that the Venetians have, probably just Spalato and the other two forts here since we cannot really get to Venice itself. Stratioti, Free Company, and the Free Swiss Guard. Oh dear lord, I think Venice is death warring me, guys. They are death warring me, and I've also crushed their fleet and made sure that they're never gonna leave the harbors here. I have naval superiority. That being said, they do have a bigger army, so I'm gonna have to be careful here. I do have slightly less troops, but my troops have the soul and the Roman heritage behind them, so uh, hopefully we can make something out of them. I'm gonna wait for them to siege this down a little bit more, then I'm gonna push in once my troops are full morale, and once I finish the Corfu siege, which I just finished, so that means I can bring these guys back and use them in the fight. Let's go, boys. It's all or nothing. We're gonna keep these guys in reserve here. Hopefully we win this. If we don't win it, then we're gonna death war ourselves. We're gonna get some loans and get some mercs and kick some butts afterwards. Let's go. Let's go. Everything or nothing, boys. Everything or nothing. 3.6 morale on uh, their side and 4.2 on our side. We have slightly more morale, so we should be a-okay uh, holding into that fight. There you go. We won that. Beautiful. Beautiful. That means we're gonna take it all the way to Venice Town and we're gonna go for a hundred percent. No less than a hundred percent, sir. No less than a hundred percent. We're gonna keep some troops behind so we can siege down these parts here whilst uh, we take the rest of Venice. Skipping a little bit, we are able to peace out Genoa for the one province that we are interested in them. And with the G, with the G, with the Venetians, not the Genovese again, we're gonna take all the cash and we are gonna be going for war reps as well since uh, they can give us some war reps and we would be more than happy to accept, said uh, amazing Vor Reparations. Now we can get all of our troops back home since we're gonna have a big ass whooping war against the Ottomans right about after our truce expires in one year. We can do these missions to recover the Eastern Islands and recover Albania. Now in order to do these, we just need to get the rest of the Venetian provinces in the coastline here and the one province from Hungary. So that's gonna be a little bit of an interesting uh, war against Hungary for two provinces really. Uh, Hungary allied to Castile and Denmark. That's massive cock block right there. We also have the civil war about to happen because uh, of reasons and we're gonna try our best to stop that from happening. Let's see. Over extension below one. That's gonna be hard to do. We're gonna delete some of these forts here of course since we don't need them and corrupt the rest of these stuff that we already have um, stated since we cannot really do much about this. Truce is over with the Ottomans. It is time to attack them. I've also allied Karaman so that I get less aggressive expansion with them after after I finish my war with the Ottomans, not because they would join my war, because they obviously would not. I'm gonna set Coachelli as my main war target, and it is a go for Zever. All right, we're gonna make sure we have naval superiority in this war, and we're gonna try and be careful not to get our army stack wiped. The Ottomans are still really, really powerful, so we have to keep our wits about us. Through the power of cannons, we've tear down the walls of Coachelli and have taken it. Uh, how does it feel, Ottomans? How does it feel when you got zero cannons and the Byzantines got all the bombardiers in the Ottoman? Sadly, we don't have any more military points to do the same with their capital, but we'll take it fairly. Oh, there you go. That was actually insanely really fast because we have two siege general and we also have uh, the proper amount of cannons in our army. So, booyah. This was really, really easy. After only four years of war, we managed to get them on their knees, won every single battle we had. Yeah, actually, we did win all the battles. I was just bluffing. I didn't know if we actually won all of them. We did win all the battles, and I'm gonna take all of these lands from them. 92 aggressive expansion and a small little bit of a coalition, but it's not that bad. Actually, I'm gonna take Teke instead of Aiden so I can uh, get my claims on uh, the Mamluks, since I want to go to war with the Mamluks uh, after this war, af actually. I am what they call in some countries an absolute absolute mad lord. Yes, sir, I am a mad lord. I'm also gonna release Eretna, which is why I took the province of Kangiri, since look at this, boys! And the next war against the Ottomans, half of the Ottomans belongs to my vassal Kangiri. No, it's Eretna. Eretna, guys. Eretna. I am probably gonna release Germian as well, since it's another one of these, uh, Baelix that I can f 
feed everything to, but not just yet. For the time being, I am going to make another vassal. These bad bitches here, there you go. They want to be my best friends and allies. And that is because Trebizond actually has cores on all of this. So with Trebizond, I basically control the uh, western parts of the Anatolian Peninsula. And by west, I mean east. I obviously am geographically challenged, guys. Time to kill off my rebels here and stabilize the country for the war that will come in a few moments now against uh, Mamluks since I want the province of Syria or better yet any of these provinces here so I can release Syria and feed them in the next war against the Mamluk souls. It is time for what is likely going to be the toughest war of this guide namely of course the war against the Mamluk. Mercy please Mamluks mercy. Peasants of Greece assemble the empire needs you. Uh, I mean empire Roman Empire not Greece. So you think you can run away from me Mamluks? Well that's not how it works. When the Roman Empire arrives at your doorsteps, you need to answer, boy. You need to answer, otherwise we speak with a weird Jamaican accent. And we gotta win this battle in Al-Karak. Sadly, they attacked us here, and this is a mountain fort, so we are not on the best terms. If we lose, it's because I was a kek meme here, and I actually fought this battle. We won, so I guess I was not a kek meme. But still, don't normally fight battles when you're sieging down mountain forts. Retreat, don't fight unless you're really confident that you're gonna win that is you're gonna lose a lot of troops regardless and it's really not the best thing to do let's clean up all of their fleets as well whilst we're at this and um well, i think after we get al karak we have everything we need to enforce our demands what i'm gonna go for is probably this so i get the holy land as well it's not too much aggressive expansion and i'm also getting some cash to fuel my next wars against the ottomans and everybody here cairo has fallen and with this we now can enforce our demands here we can even take a couple more provinces into this area here i am gonna do this simply because it's gonna make it easier for me to take medina in the next war in fact i could take it now and work my way to mecca too but i don't want to i want to take the money instead is more valuable to me and there's gonna be a small coalition but we have a truce with most of these nations already so really not much to be worried about we're gonna be obviously deleting the fort here so now it is important that you can concentrate development here and in these provinces also since it is quite a little bit of dev that you can take from here take note that uh you want to be releasing the nation of syria before you uh, start querying like crazy taking syria is a valuable nation since look at this all of syria proper we're gonna take in the next few wars and that's basically two wars one for Edetna, one for syria and we basically have half of the eastern roman empire's borders right there the next war against the ottomans is quickly done i didn't show the war because they literally had five thousand troops so it was a piece of cake i literally just walked in took whatever i wanted and i left so coalition wise it's not much nations here we're giving back all of the cores to our vassals uh, trebizond and um eretna here so now if you go to the player map mode this is what we look like in 1503 so after we feed back syria and we do our next war against the ottomans before the 1515 strikes since we plan on a truce breaking through attacking one of their allies it's gonna be ridiculously fun because we will basically be already eastern roman empire we also are insanely rich and that is definitely also because of the gold mine in kosovo but because we do have a strong economy overall and we can field as many troops as we need guys if you want me to actually continue this run leave a like i know we have 3,000 likes for venice but if you want me to do this one let's get 4,000 likes i know it sounds like a lot of likes but unless there's actually support for this and you guys want to see the mid to late game version which would be the next hundred years in one episode of this run then hit that like button once we get 4k likes on this i definitely will show you what you exactly need to do to restore the roman empire before 1600 as the byzantine so obviously later expansion you want to finish off the mamluks and go into the egyptian parts especially start munching into the north african parts and expand into italy and even the rest of the balkan idea wise i've taken quantity and religious as my first two ideas because after i finish religious ideas i'm gonna get a cb on everybody who's not orthodox around me which is literally everybody we don't talk about muscovy they don't count and uh next up i likely will be taking trade ideas if i need economically speaking more money but i probably don't so i will either take diplomatic or influence ideas influence makes it easier to integrate 
integrate your vassals, gives 25% annexation cost reduction, diplomatic gives you two extra diplomats, and war score cost minus 20% for provinces, so both of those are really great ideas to go for. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments, and if you want me to do more mid-game guides such as this one, I'm curious what you guys think about this. And until the next one, have a great day everybody. I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members, as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much guys for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.